All right, so if you've spent any time in bodybuilding forums or watched content from guys who compete at the top level, you've probably heard the take that peptides like CJC1295 and ipamorelin are a waste of money compared to real growth hormone. And honestly, for what they're trying to do, that's completely accurate. But I think it's important to understand why that's true for them before you can understand why it doesn't apply to you. So when a guy needs to step on stage at 250 pounds shredded, his pituitary gland cannot produce enough growth hormone to get him there. That's just the biological ceiling. So those guys have to use four to eight IUs of pharmaceutical HGH every single day. CJC1295 and ipamorelin genuinely can't compete. But here's the part that matters for everyone else. When you inject exogenous HGH, you're bypassing your body's feedback system entirely. Your pituitary senses the elevated levels and responds by shutting down its own production. You also lose the natural pulsatile pattern. Growth hormone is supposed to pulse, spike, then clear. That rhythm matters for receptor sensitivity. CJC1295 and ipamorelin, they work differently. They signal your pituitary gland to release its own growth hormone. And because your pituitary gland is still doing all of the releasing, you keep that natural rhythm intact. The other thing to understand is the whole IGF-1 piece. The research on IGF-1 and mortality shows a U-shaped curve, meaning if your IGF is too low, your mortality risk goes up. And if your IGF-1 is too high, your mortality risk also goes up. Anything above 190 and you start seeing elevated risk of cancer, and anything below 120, you're going to see muscle wasting and increased frailty. The sweet spot for longevity appears to be somewhere between 120 and 175. Bodybuilders pushing high doses of HGH are intentionally elevating well above that range because that's what it takes to carry that much muscle. But for a guy who wants to be functional at 75, keeping IGF-1 moderate makes more sense for you. And that's exactly what CJC-1295 and ipamorelin allow. Your feedback loop stays intact, which prevents you from going super physiological. If you're stepping on stage as a pro bodybuilder, CJC and ipamorelin won't get you there. But if you're optimizing for health and longevity, they might be exactly what you need. So listen, if you want help with dosing, timing, and sourcing, I do break all of this down inside of my free community. If you want to invite, all you have to do is just comment the word school with a K below, and I'll send you a link. I hope this was helpful for you, and I'll see you on the next one.